Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on the DigiQuadics Custom Daily or Facility Checklist. Um, just wanted to give you guys a warm welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are tuning in from. It is uh, now sunny with eight inches of snow here um, in Denver, Colorado. So hope you guys are having a great day so far. I'm really excited to share with you um, how you can digitize some checklists in your pool um, or facility um, to make things more efficient overall, keep great records um, and know what's going on. Um, if you're joining us for the first time today, we just got done with the custom forms uh, webinar. I can uh, post a link to that here. In, actually, it'll be tomorrow by the time we upload the recording. Um, so you can watch it if you were unable to make it for that. Otherwise, welcome back. Um, it's great to see you guys again here after a quick little break. And I am going to get open the Q&A and the chat. If you guys could, real quick, drop a quick question into or a quick comment into the chat. Let us know where you are tuning in from. Um, just so we know who's all joining us on the webinar today. We're going to have Q&A. Uh, Michael is joining us here um, as a panelist, so um, he's going to help answer questions as they come up. If it makes sense during the webinar, you can drop them in um, and I can answer them live if it is appropriate. Otherwise, we can wait until the end. I'm planning about 20 minutes um, for the actual demo of uh, the checklist and then we'll get into some more Q&A um, toward the end as well. So let me go ahead and share my screen with you guys so you can see what's going on here. Perfect. Looks like I've got the screen share going on. Alrighty. So I am uh, logged into my DigiQuadix account. Um, so I'm looking at my dashboard here. I've got some open sub requests, some open shifts to approve, um, some open maintenance issues, a few other things like that. But um, today we're just going to be talking about the custom checklist. If you want to learn about some of the other modules, free feel, feel free. Uh, to check out some of the other videos we have posted online um, and keep an eye out for upcoming webinars over the next several weeks. Um, we're doing a huge push to get everybody just educated and knowing what's going on before summertime. Um, I do have one special offer, so stay around till the end of this webinar um, so that I can share that with you um, as well. So if you're interested in seeing a specific checklist that you may or may not have at your facility, think something like, you know, a, a binder, a three ring binder, uh, maybe like a laminated sheet with a Sharpie or an Expo marker on it, anything like that. If you have a checklist in mind that you would like to see how it could be digitized, drop that into the chat as well. And I can throw in a couple little examples as well. Um, but I've prepared a couple in the back of my mind that I think would make sense for us to go through. Um, so I'm gonna jump over into the DigiQuadix settings here. And then I'm gonna get down to the checklist option. So the checklists are specific to each location in your DigiQuadix account. So again, if you have your location set up um, by facility or even by department, you can create different checklists um, for each facility. So Bikini Bottom Aquatic Center does not have any checklists yet. I'm going to go ahead and add a checklist. So I'm gonna say this one is going to be a opening procedures checklist. And the description, this is just going to show up for your employees or lifeguards, pool managers, whoever is actually completing this checklist to let them know all items must be completed before the facility can be opened. Perfect. All right. Now, there's a couple little quirks here, but you can change the order of appearance. So, like, let's say that you made a closing checklist and then you made an opening checklist, but you want to reverse the order, you can just put in a number here to indicate that um, just to order, you know, rearrange the order of them really. The location again is going to be Bikini Bottom Aquatic Center. And this one is going to be active. So what you can do is you can create multiple checklists. So if you have a checklist for, um, let's say your outdoor pool at Bikini Bottom Aquatic Center, and that checklist does not apply right now because it's winter time. You can actually just turn this to active. No, um, it saves all the information, but it just hides the checklist from being completed by the employees. Um, so it's easy for you to, you know, just re uh, reactivate that once the summertime comes around and your open or your outdoor pool is filled. So 
The next thing that I'm going to show you is the days of the week that the checklist appears on the dashboard. So obviously an opening procedures checklist is probably going to happen every single day um, unless you're closed on Sundays or something like that. But um, let's say that you have a checklist for cleaning or preventative maintenance that you only do on a certain day or a couple days of the week. You can just uncheck those days of the week right here. Um, now, we're going to want to complete this checklist, so we'll make sure Monday is checked because today's Monday. Um, but the point is that everything is very flexible as far as your checklists and your checklist tasks. Okay, so uh, task name. I'm going to think back to when I was guarding at quarter to five in the morning back in the day. Uh, let's see, open, the, open and unlock the doors. Easy enough. Um, that's going to happen every day. I'm going to do take chems in Digiquatics, of course. I'm going to make sure all lifeguard tubes and rescue equipment is in place. You get the idea. Um, I'm going to do a pump room walkthrough and we can either use the custom forms module for your pump room walkthrough or you could do a separate checklist. But the point is that the pump room walkthrough has to be done before you can open the facility. So basically you can add, you can add as many tasks as you want. You could add a checklist with a hundred tasks if you wanted to. Of course you can just remove the tasks that you don't need um, and then you can go ahead and save this checklist. Again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to jump over to the chat if it makes sense to answer them now. Otherwise, we will wait until the end. Oops, I made this checklist inactive. So here it says it's inactive. I'm going to go ahead and activate it so that we can actually complete this checklist. All right, sorry about that. Go ahead and save. And of course, you know, if you need to go back and add some tasks later on or edit it, you can do that too. Um, I'm going to add another checklist. So this one is going to be uh, closing procedures cannot complete until all patrons have left the building. Just as an example. Yes, this is active. Uh, we'll do closing chems, close and lock facility doors, take out the trash and put in lane lines. Oh, those 50 meter lane lines, gotta love them. Now, actually, here's a great example now that I thought of that. So closing procedures. So uh, back in the day, I had masters swimming that would only happen on Tuesday and Thursday mornings. So what I'm gonna do is say put in lane lines, 25 yards for the, the short part of the pool. And so we would put in the, the long course on Monday and Wednesday nights and Saturdays. So I'm gonna uncheck this because we had masters Tuesday, Thursday, and uh, Sunday actually, sorry. So Sunday night, we don't do it, so we only do it, sorry. We want these to show up on Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. Sorry about that, I confused myself. Now the other days, we want the 25 yard. There we go, all right. We want the 25 yard lane lines to show up. So if it's, if it's a Monday when I'm completing this checklist, Put in the 50 meter lane lines will show up. Put in the 25 yards will not. All right, go ahead and save this. All right, so we have two checklists. Um, so I think the example of you know having different tasks show up on different days of the week kind of makes sense with the different lane lines. Of course, um, you can do it for preventative maintenance and cleaning as well. Now I'm gonna jump back over to the dashboard. All right, so I see all the most recent um, pool chemical records with the saturation index automatically calculated and everything, but below that, we actually have the, um, 
Bikini Bottom Aquatic Center. So I can see all of the checklists that need to be completed here as an employee. So I'm gonna go do opening procedures checklist. Now, what's cool about this is you might have a bunch of different staff co collaborating on the same checklist. So I'm gonna say I open and unlock the doors um, and then I made all the equipment it was in place, made sure all the equipment was in place and save this. And now it is going to indicate that this is now 50% complete. So if I'm a manager, I can go back and quickly look at my dashboard and see opening procedures is 50% complete. Obviously there's a few loose you know, items remaining still. So as another employee, I can actually go to the same checklist, mark off the items that I completed. And let's just say that we need to add one bag by carb at close. Okay, so you can add notes here um, so that your manager or you know, somebody else who's looking at these checklists can, can see what you were saying about the comments in the checklist. All right, perfect. So here is our opening procedures checklist. Now, I, we didn't really get a good, good snapshot of the time, but if I was logged in as a different employee, this would have indicated, you know, Sandy Starfish completed a couple of these um, tasks and then let's say Michael Pierce completed a couple of different tasks at different times. So everything is date and time stamped as far as who did it and when it was completed. Another cool thing here is you can export this to PDF. So if you wanna store it on your local network drive or print it um, for record keeping, whatever you wanna do, the PDF option is available for you as well. So here's those notes I added about need to add one bag of bicarb at close. Um, and there's the note there. So now it's closing time, very short day here. So I'm gonna go back over and, and uh, jump into the closing procedures. Now, remember that example of the lane lines? So we're going to put in the 50 meter lane lines because today's a Monday and we have masters tomorrow morning um, that do long course. So we're gonna have this task that only shows up because today is Monday. Um, tomorrow, when you complete the same checklist, this task here, put in the lane lines, 50 meters, is going to remain hidden, and then you can have the 25 yard lane lines show up instead. So I'm going to check all these guys off. Um, as an admin, if you are, a, a, you know, an employee that has admin privileges in Digiquatics, you can always backdate these. So if you have somebody that you know needed to retroactively enter some data or something like that, you can always have them. Um, do that as well. Otherwise, regular non-admin level employees, um, it'll just record the current time. They can't, they can't backdate what they did um, and when. So that's kind of how the checklists work. And there's another view here where you can actually look at your different locations and the associated checklist. So my primary location right now on my Sandy Starfish profile is the Kings Park Rec Center. So right now I see all of the checklists at Kings Park Rec Center that have been completed with the most recent at the top and then continuing down from there. So um, a couple other ones here, bathroom checks or walkthroughs, closing, opening, and sunscreen logs, just a couple ideas for you. Um, you can filter down into these. So if you only wanna see your closing checklists, you can see what percentage of them was complete when the uh, checklist was created. And then if it was updated at a different time for whatever reason, um, you can look at that as well. Now, one thing, it looks like someone left some notes here on this checklist. This one come, goes back a little bit because this account doesn't get used a lot, but it says lock the doors and that's the task name. Couldn't find the padlock for the south gate. Used extra from guard office. So those notes can easily show up here. So if you're just kind of scrolling through your uh, different facilities, it's very easy for you to see kind of what's going on all from one spot. So Bikini Bottom Aquatic Center, this is the one that we just did. Um, these are brand new checklists, so there isn't a, there isn't a real history for all of these, um, but my opening is still 75%, closing complete, closing is 100% complete, and then we have the notes for need to add one bag of bicarb at close. So again, if you guys have any, anything that you would like to see for some of the checklists you have at your facility, feel free to drop it over into the chat and I can kind of show you a specific example of those. In the meantime, I'm just gonna show you a couple other options here. So one of them is on the dashboard, um, you can actually, actually, well, let me take one step back. So under maintenance, you're actually going to find open issues, slide inspections, checklists, patron counts, and then the custom forms. So um, 
to get back to where I was because it kind of redirected when I created the form, you want to go ahead and click uh, maintenance checklist. And then you can add a new one right from here. So for the Kings Park Rec Center, I have bathroom check, closing, opening, sunscreen logs. Um, or if I were to change the location to Bikini Bottom Aquatic Center, I'm going to see the other checklist here. You can also export these. So if you want to get these checklists um, in, a, in a format that works for your city or your organization. So if you want to in Excel um, and you want to store them on your local network drive or you want to print them out and put them in a file cabinet for safe record keeping or anything like that, of course, all of those options to kind of dump your data from Doge Aquatics and store it locally are available to you as well. No questions so far. Um, so let me see here. Checklist. And then briefly, oh yeah, the duplication. So when you create some checklists, so one example of this is you have multiple locations and they may have the exact same or slightly different opening and closing procedures. So what you can do is just create one checklist, so at Bikini Bottom, let's say that's the first location in your Digiquatics account, then you can click Duplicate. And Duplicate is actually going to create copies of this checklist at all of the other locations that you select. So you can select all, deselect all. Um, so we're going to say we want this checklist to be copied over to Carmody, Sunnyside Pool, Golden Rec, Wheat Ridge Rec Center. And then when I save this, it's going to go ahead and duplicate all those checklists over to those other locations so that you only have to build these checklists once basically because they're, you know, some of them can be quite lengthy and it's time consuming to do that. Um, but you can go ahead and just duplicate them over. One more thing um, to actually show you guys how the PDF works is if you go to checklists, I'm going to view, go back to the bikini bottom aquatic center. This is the actual PDF that is generated. So we get a date and timestamp here, and then we can see closing chems was completed by Sandy Starfish at you know, this date and time, just a few minutes ago. Um, and this is the date that that checklist was completed. So that's how the PDF export works. Of course, you know this is just in your browser. So if you want to download or print either of these, you certainly can, um, and you can do whatever you would like with them at that point in time. So I'm going to go back to the closing procedures checklist. So, I mean, in general, the checklist module itself is, is pretty simple and straightforward. It's, you know, create checklists with as many tasks and whatever tasks that can show up on different days. Um, so, you know, it's just one of the many things that Digiquatics does to help streamline everything all into one system in your, in your pool or facility operation. Um, as an admin here too, if you needed to delete an existing checklist, you have to be an admin to do that, but you could do that as well. Now that I see that there. Alrighty. Um, any questions? Feel free to drop them over into the chat or the Q&A. Michael can respond to some of those or I can answer them live as well. Now, if you weren't in our custom forms uh, webinar that I mentioned earlier um, today, we have a special exclusive webinar offer. So getting ready for summer, if you guys are interested in a digital products account, if you request a quote in the next seven days, so by Monday, February 4th, um, then once you guys get your digital products set, uh, account set up, we're going to send you a free tablet. So basically really what we're just trying to do is encourage you guys to digitize your operation and improve your risk management for the summer. Um, and we'd like to give you a little something to help you do that. And a lot of times people ask, you know, what about cell phone use to my employees? You know, if I'm requiring them to do checklists and forms and everything with their phone, you know, how does that kind of work? So this is one way to easily get around all of that is just um, using a cost effective tablet. Um, if you have Wi-Fi or you can use cellular on your existing organization's plan. Um, so then they can just go through and do all their checklists. They can, you know, communicate with you, do their shift reports, um, check their certifications, everything that they need to do, um, scheduling, time clock, everything like that all in one system. So if you'd like to request a quote, you can go over to digiquatics.com slash pricing. Um, I'm going to drop the link right here in the chat. 
Um, basically, if you're seasonal or year round, um, we customize the plan for, for you. So if you already have a staff scheduling system in place, no problem. If you already have a timekeeping system in place, no problem. Um, you just pick the modules that you want to use, um, tell us how many staff and how many facilities you have, and we're going to put together a customized package that works just for you. Um, also, so that is the, um, the, the way to kind of take the next step if you don't already have a DigiQuadics account is to request a quote. Um, if you need to just do a, a free trial to see if it's a good fit for you as well, you can go to um, the website and you can sign up for a 30 day free trial. So a couple different options there, uh, just depending on you know, what your organization process looks like, uh, either a quote or a free trial, or if you'd like to do a more customized demo, feel free to reach out to us at team at digiquatics.com and we can get everything squared away for you. Um, so if there aren't any questions, I think we're going to wrap up just a few minutes early. This webinar will be recorded, actually is being recorded and it will be available um, to watch later on. So if you know people in you know, your community that wanted to make it to this webinar and they're traveling, I mean, it's trade show season, everything is busy. So this webinar will be posted. Um, so we'll be distributing some more information via email about how to access the recording. Um, and you can forward that to your peers as well. Um, so unless there are any other questions, which I don't really see that there are, um, just in case, Everybody else didn't see this. Monica has a question. Can a checklist be assigned to a specific person or group? Example, all my head lifeguards only. Um, basically, Michael already addressed this, but not at the moment, but one way uh, to do this is to actually just put in the description who it is um, for. So if you wanna say, you know, head guards only or instructors only or something like that, feel free to put that in there so that they know this is a checklist I can complete. This is not a checklist I should be completing. All right. Cool. Well, again, thank you all for your time um, this afternoon or this morning, wherever you're turning in from. We're going to be at TPPC, uh, Texas Public Pool Council tomorrow, and then Association of Aquatic Professionals, the AOAP conference here coming up in just a few short weeks. Um, so we look forward to seeing you if you're going to be at one of those conferences soon. But otherwise, we hope you have a great rest of your day and we will talk to you soon. Thanks.